This program is made possible by the members of the Church Street Baptist Church in Greensboro, North Carolina. Thank you for joining us today. It is my honor to be able to come into your home this morning and to bring you this message. I want to take you into our service here in just a minute, but before that we do, I want to invite you to log on to Facebook, to Twitter, to Instagram, and follow everything that's going on in the ministry here at the church. You'll find everything, all the information at the bottom of the screen. We want to keep up with you, and that's the best way to do it through social media. Or you can call the church office, the number, you can see it. We want to keep up with what's going on in your life. But I want to take you today into a message that God gave me for the church last week. The title of the message is, What Do You Do When You Get Lost? Now we use that term lost to refer to people that have not been saved, people that have not found the Lord Jesus or Jesus hadn't found them, but sometimes as the people of God, we feel lost. We don't lose our salvation, that's a false doctrine. But there are times in our spiritual journey where God will put us in a place and we don't know where we are, we don't know where we're going, and we don't know how to get out of the position we're in. So I want to take you now into the message, What Do You Do? when you get lost. Thank you for joining us today. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Looking at chapter number 19, the lowest part of the man of God's life. When you read chapter number 19 of 1 Kings, you find Elijah the mighty prophet of God. And he is so tired, and he is so weary that he leaves his position. He goes out into the Sinai Peninsula, the Negev, what is today modern Saudi Arabia. He goes out into the wilderness. And if that's not bad enough, it's what he says. God, kill me. I'm a failure. I think you could probably say about Elijah, he is here lost. He does not know which way to turn. He doesn't know which way's up and which way's down. He does not know where to go and he does not know who to talk to. He is lost. You see, in the Bible, there are two types of lostness. Number one. There is the lostness of the sinner. That's what Paul talked about in Ephesians chapter number 2, verse number 1 down through verse number 5. And he said, And you which were quickened, you were dead in trespasses and sins. And he gets on down and he uses words like, You were alienated from God. You were outside of the covenant. You were outside of the promise. And we all remember if you've been saved, you remember what it was like that day before you said yes to Jesus. You felt lost. You didn't know which way was up and which way was down. You just knew you could not be what you were right then. Something had to change. And you felt lost. You felt lost. Say it with me. You felt lost. Here's the problem. We as the people of God, after we get saved, we stop using that word. Here's the problem with that. The problem is your Bible continues to say that after you get saved, there will be times when you feel lost. Watch my words. You are not lost, but you feel lost. As a child of God, you can't get unsaved. Remember, you didn't buy your salvation, you can't lose your salvation. You didn't pay for yourself and you can't unpay for yourself. You didn't get it, God gave it to you. You didn't find it, God found you. And the God that found you is a God that will not lose you. So salvationally, we cannot be lost. 
but positionally, we sure can feel lost. Some of you all are looking at me like a caster. And let me just tell you, there will be times, let me give you the Webster's Dictionary of the word lost. To be aimless. To wander around without position. To wander around without purpose. To wander around without focus. There will be times in your journey, you don't know which way to turn. There are going to be times in your life you don't know which way's up and which way's down. And the problem is, as the people of God, there will be times when we are lost. We don't know which way to turn. We don't know which way to go. We don't know what to do. You say, I don't believe you. You don't have to believe me. Remember what the psalmist said in Psalm chapter 18, verse 28. David said, for thou wilt light my candle. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. He said in Psalm 43, verse number 3, Oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Why would you need to be led? Because you're lost. Why would you need to figure out where to go? Because you don't have any idea where you're at. You know what it means to be lost? It means to not know where you're at and not know how to get to where you're going. Now, I'm just going to be just downright honest with you. There have been times in my spiritual sojourn that I have not known where I'm at and I do not know how to get to where I'm going. I know I want to go somewhere. I know I need to go somewhere. I know I'd like to go somewhere. I know I'd feel like getting there. But I have no idea where I'm at, let alone how to get to where I am going. And that is where Elijah is at. Now, here's the problem. If you have never felt lost in your spiritual sojourn, it's probably because you are not saved yet and you are still spiritual. I have met so many super spiritual Christians before. And they say, preacher, I've never had a bad day. I've never had a low moment. I've never been in a valley. I say, I know you've never been in a valley because you've never found the mountain. I say, I know you've never had a bad day because you don't have any idea what a real good day is. I know you've never felt bad because, honey, if you don't know Jesus, you've never really felt good. But today you feel good when you find Jesus. You'll know there are going to be bad days when the hounds of hell come after you and the demons of hell come after you and you don't know which way's up. You don't know which way's down. You don't know which way's in. You don't know which way's out. You feel lost. You say, how do I know if I'm lost? Well, you got to understand Elijah's lostness. I want to show you a few little things. And look, Last Sunday, I didn't have anything. God didn't, I didn't have a message. I got up here, I fumbled, I mumbled, I stumbled. And then sometimes God just pours a bucket load of heaven out on my soul. I got 14 messages on my iPad right now in this one little sermon. So I promise you, I will not preach them all. I'm just going to load them up. I don't even have a gospel shotgun this morning. I got a gospel A-bomb. I'm just going to light the fuse, let God blow it out. And if you survive through this thing, you're going to be happy. And if you don't, I'll see you in glory land. Say amen right there. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. you got to understand about Elijah's losses. Number one, he was lost in spite of... Of his accomplishments. Look at verse number 1. The Bible says, And Ahab told Elijah all, Ahab told Jezebel, all that Elijah had done. What had Elijah done? I'll tell you what Elijah had done. Elijah had slain the prophets of Baal. Elijah had seen the mighty miracles of God. Elijah had seen the greatest miracle since the splitting of the Red Sea. The, the greatest miracle that Israel had seen since that day. He had seen fire fall out of heaven and consume the altar and the water and the sacrifice. Remember this. Just because you've done something for God doesn't mean you're not going to suffer because of your faith. Just because you have walked with God doesn't mean you're going to ha- not have problems. Listen, I don't care if you preach. I don't care if you sing. I don't care if you're faithful. I don't care if you never cheat on your husband. I don't care if you never cheat on your wife. I don't care if you don't know who Jack Bean or vodka is. I don't care if you don't know what a doobie is and a cigarette. You don't even know the Marlboro Man. I do not care how pure, how right, how good, how holy you are. There are going to be times when you feel lost. There are going to be times when you don't know which way to go. It does not mean you are bad. It means you're saved. It's going to be times... When you feel lost. How do I know? Because Elijah's there. Elijah's the greatest prophet in the Old Testament. In spite of his accomplishments, he felt lost. Number two, he was lost because of the actions of another. Why is he in the wilderness? Because of Jezebel. Listen to me. Some of you do not know how you got to where you are. Some of you cannot figure out how you ended up where you are. Some of you look and say, God, why do I have to suffer for that person? God, I didn't know my mother was sick, but yet here I am. I'm a caretaker now. God, I didn't know my husband would leave me. I didn't know my wife would walk out on me. I didn't know my kids would become prodigals. I didn't know that preacher would do what he did. I didn't know those deacons would act like monkeys. I did not know that people would get crazy. And yet I'm suffering. Elijah's in the wilderness because of something. I didn't do anything to deserve to get molested. I didn't do anything to deserve to be beat. 
I didn't ask to be born into a drunk home. I didn't do anything to have a mama that never told me she loved me. What did I do, God? When God sends you into the wilderness because of the actions of another. Number three, Elijah was lost and felt lost in spite of his faith in God. Can I tell you something? The devil's a liar and the father of lies. Just because he says something doesn't mean it's true. Just because he thinks he can prove it doesn't mean it's true. You know, they they try to prove that people never walked on the moon, but I'm pretty sure up in Washington I saw moon rocks. Just because the devil says it doesn't make it true. And just because you're lost and feel like you're in the wilderness doesn't mean you don't believe God enough. It doesn't mean you hadn't been holy enough. It doesn't mean you've been righteous enough. It doesn't mean you hadn't done exactly what... Now, some of you hadn't done. Some of you walked like the devil, talked like the devil, acted like the devil, spit like the devil, chewed like the devil. You've lived like the devil. And listen, just because you're in the slop doesn't mean you're not a hog. It could mean that you've got a snout and you need to stop honking. Here's what you need to know. It doesn't mean you are. The devil wants you to think you didn't live holy enough. You didn't live right enough. You didn't do enough. You weren't enough. You weren't righteous enough. You weren't pure enough. You weren't this. But yet Elijah is in the wilderness. And he's lost. How do you know if you lost? How do you know if you lost? Number one, look at Elijah. He was out of place. The Bible tells us in verse number three that Elijah had come down to Beersheba, which is in the kingdom of Judah. Why is that a problem? Here's why it's a problem. Who is Elijah a prophet to? Elijah's not a prophet to Judah. Elijah is a prophet to Israel. Elijah's not a prophet to the two southern tribes. He's a prophet to the ten northern tribes. He's not supposed to be in Judah. He's supposed to be in Israel. He's not supposed to be where he's at. He's supposed to be in another place. You'll know that you're in the lost place. You'll know you're in that wilderness because you'll wake up one day and you'll say, how did I get here? How did I end up like this? I don't. Last year at Christmas time, me and mom and daddy, we were sitting around the Christmas tree. This year we've got to take our gifts over to the nursing home. Last year I was with somebody. Last year I had this thing going on. Last year I had everything in focus. Last year I was in the Christmas play. Last year I sang in the choir. This year I can't even find a church to go to. Last year everything looked good. This year everything looks bad. Last year everything looked up. This year everything looks down. Last year everything was peachy. This year it's rotted to pieces. And you're out of place. You wake up and say, God, Where am I? You know where you are? You're lost. You're wandering in the wilderness. He was out of position, place. Number two, he was out of partners. Look at verse number three. What does it say? He goes down to Judah. What does he do in Judah? He leaves his servant there. You know what Elijah said? I just want to be by myself. I don't want to be around anybody. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to deal with anybody. I just want to get in my little bubble, and I just want to live. And th- You will know when you feel that lostness because you will push everybody and everything out. I don't want to talk to the preacher. I don't want to talk to my spouse. I don't want to talk to the deacons. I don't want to talk to my teachers. I don't want to talk to my friends. I don't want to talk to mama. I don't want to talk to daddy. I don't want to talk. I just want it to be me. Why? Because I feel lost. He was out of partners. Number three, he was out of purpose. Watch what he said in verse four. He said, God, I'm begging you, take away my life. Elijah, you're the man of God. You mean you want to die? Elijah, you're the prophet of God. You're telling me you want to die? Elijah, you've got a ministry. You're telling me you want to die? Elijah, you've got this and you've got that. You're telling me you want to die? There are people in this room right now. You can go ahead and rip that spiritual mask off. You may have it together. It may look like it's all together on the outside. It may be wonderful. It may look wonderful. It may seem wonderful. But you know on the inside, you are a hollow shell of lost. Number four. He was out of power. Watch verse 4. He said, I am not better than my father's. This is what he means. He meant my father failed, and so have I. My father couldn't do it, and neither could I. When you reach that point where you feel like I have failed too much for God, you'll know you're lost. Let me just stop taking a little time out and give you something I didn't write down. This is where we've all messed up. 
We thought we can mess up so God can't, God can't use us. Here's what you've got to understand, the flip side of it. You can't be good enough for God to use you. It's by His grace and mercy that He picked you up out of sin. It's by His grace and mercy He gives you anything. It's by His grace and mercy you're alive. It's by His grace and mercy you've got blood pumping in your veins and air in your lungs. It's by His grace. And you didn't earn it, and you can't lose it. Here's what I'm trying to tell somebody. You can't mess up enough where God won't forgive you. You can't mess up enough where God won't use you. You can't mess up enough where God won't touch you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's what you've got to realize. You're just in that lost place. You're in that wilderness place. You're in that wandering place. And I'm telling you, there is a God in heaven. He has not forgotten you. He is still faithful. And He has not failed. And He is not finished. I'm telling you, God is real. God's on time. God's in control. Although you're lost, you've got to realize, honey, you didn't get lost on purpose. You didn't get lost by your own accord. You didn't do it. God did it to you. You say, how do you know? Here's how I know. You remember that day you got saved by grace? You walked into that church thinking everything was going to be always like it had been and you walked in that day and the Holy Ghost thunder punched you in the spirit and he woke your soul up and you said I've got to get saved. Somebody said why do you need to get saved? You said because I got lost and the moment you realized you got lost you realized you had to be found and in the spiritual walk God will let you get lost so you realize I need to get found. Listen, when you're sucking down the liquor and the drinks and all that stuff it's party time honey. You know what God will do? God lets you get a belly full of that mess and you start puking in your spirit and say, I'm sick of this. And it's when you get sick of it, you start hunting a bone. It's when you get tired of it, you start saying, is there not a great physician in Gilead? It's when you get done with everything. You say, is my life not worth living? And when you realize everybody else has walked out, that's when you realize the God man has walked in. When you realize everybody's checked out on me, that's when the good God of I say glory. I say hallelujah. I say thank you, Jesus. I say glory to the Lamb. When everybody walks out, God walks in, honey. Now, that was all just introduction. What do you do? When you get lost, I got three little points. I want to give them to you. Number one, you rest. What do you do when you get in that position and you don't know which way to go? You know, the worst thing you can do when you get lost is try to get found. Worst thing you can do when you get in where you don't know is try to get out where you do know. The worst thing you can do when you get in that valley is say, you know what? I'm going to push through this thing. I'm going to motor through this thing. I'm going to try to make this thing better. I'm going to try to make myself better. I'm going to try. I'm going to read another book. I'm going to read another magazine. Here's the problem with books and magazines. They're written by men, and men got you in this mess, and man can't get you out of this mess. You've just got to sit there. You've got to wait. What did Elijah do in verse 5? And he lay and what? slept what else should you do when you get lost lay down and take your nap some of you are so tired you can't breathe right physically you are so exhausted listen this is the greatest land that God ever made I bleed red white and blue I mean I love it I got Lee Greenwood that plays in my sleep there's one problem with our nation that I wish it wasn't so We have this innate drive to always be doing and always be going and always be pumping and always make money. And if you don't work, you're lazy. And if you don't keep going, you're lazy. You know what that'll do? That'll burn your body out. God said, in six days thou shalt work. But on the seventh day, that is a day of Sabbath, a day of rest. And we've pumped through, we've primed through, we've kept pushing. And you know what God will do? God will put your carcass in the wilderness And you don't know what to do. And you'll finally just say, I'm done. And you'll lay down. When you rest, you know what you're saying? I trust. You don't lay in the bed with somebody you don't trust. You'll end up with a knife in your throat in the night. You only lay with who you trust. And God said, rest in the Lord. What did Elijah rest in? Write these things down. Number one, he rested in the sweetness of God. In the sweetness of God. How many of you have got a Bible this morning? Take that Bible and hold it up real high for it. I want to see how many of you got Bibles. All right. How many of you got them open to chapter 19? All right. You got it open to chapter 19? I want you to find chapter 19 is the lowest point in Elijah's life. You ready? Find one verse where God condemned him. You won't find one. You know why? 
Because at our lowest point, not in the lowest point in our life, the devil will come. He'll say, you've messed up so bad. You've done too much. You've messed up. You've fouled. You have done everything and God's done with you. God, You think God condemns you. God does this and throws that guilt on you. You realize God is a loving father. God is a holy father. God is a good father. I know your daddy may have beat you. I know your daddy may have left you. I know your daddy may have never told you he didn't. He loved you. He may have never said that, but you hear me. You hear me well. You hear me, you hear me well, you hear me, you hear me well. The God in heaven, the God that saved you, the God that put you in the family of God, He loves you more than you could ever think. He cares for you more than you could ever imagine. He's a loving God. And He doesn't condemn His children. Hear me. Do you know why you're here today? Because God wanted you here. You know how I many nails are on the highway and road? A bunch, because my wife picks up almost every one of them in her tires. <laughs> you could have run over a nail today and stopped you from coming. But God sent an angel with a magnetometer out beside that way you'd go. And he said, move every obstacle, move every nail, move every branch, move every limb, anything that would stop them. You know what we call that? We call that the sovereignty of God, the fact that God is in control. Oh! All the time God is in control. He rested. And you know what you need to do today? You need to rest in the Lord. And just say, God, I don't know why I'm at. I don't know where I'm at. But I trust you. Number two. And this is my big point. This is my favorite point. Number one, he rested. Number two, he refreshed. Verse number five. If you look at verse number 5, you're going to find that when Elijah went to sleep, he woke up. And God sent the baker of heaven, and he didn't wake up the same way he went to sleep. When he went to sleep, he went to sleep, and there was nothing there. But when he woke up, verse number 5 and verse number 6 tell us that he woke up and he found three things. Look at your Bible. Number one, he found a cake that was baking. See that? Number two, what was it baking on? Coals. And number three, he found a cruise of water. Now, God already alliterated that for me. He found a cake, and he found coals, and he found a cruise. He found a cake, and he found coals, and he found a cruise. When Elijah was weary, God didn't give him a piece of chicken. God didn't send him a lamb chop. He gave him cake and coals and a cruise. Do you know why God gave him cake? And coal and cruise, because that's exactly what he needed. He needed cake, and he needed coal, and he needed a cruise. He didn't need a lamb chop. He didn't need an umbrella. He needed exactly what God gave him. Isn't it interesting that exactly what you need when you need it's when God sends it? Now, remember this. Everything God puts in the Bible, he puts it there on purpose. Everything he puts in there, he puts it in there for a reason. Let me just give you these three little things and what they mean. Number one, he gives Elijah a cake. That was baking. You say, what was that cake? Well, it was a type of pita bread that you would see. A, a, a type of bread that they make in, the, in, in Israel, in the wilderness, and the Bedouins make it. And what they do is they take that dough and they put it on a hot surface and they bake it. Now remember this. In your Bible, bread is always a picture of the word of God. God. It's always a picture of when God goes to give you a word. Isn't it interesting that at the moment you're the lowest and the moment you're at your weakest point and the moment you need to hear something, what does God do, man? You come in here and your heart's beating out of your chest and you feel like you're done and you feel like it's over and you feel like God's abandoned you and the church's abandoned you and everybody's walked away and the preacher doesn't come in and he doesn't preach on checkbooks and he doesn't preach on marriage and he doesn't preach on finance. He's preached on that stuff before. But today, he's got a word about what to do when you're lost. I wonder how he got that. I'll tell you how he got that. There's a holy God that gave him exactly what you need. He gave you a word. Glory goes right there. Some of y'all done been to too many Methodist churches. Y'all need to wake up and go to the Pentecostal church. Because I got soul in my soul and I done been to too many churches with Jesus in them to go to a place that looked, resembles Forbes and Dick. So God will give you a cake. Then number two, what does he give them? Coal. Now God didn't give him Kingsford. That is called mineral coal. That is produced. That is, 
that is mined, that is formulated. What Elijah had, it wasn't a coal, it was actually a hot stone. What it was, it was a flat rock. And in the desert, how many of you have ever seen them YouTube videos in Arizona in the middle of the summer? They take them eggs and they crack them and they throw them on the concrete. And what does it do? It fries it. Now here's the question. Why didn't that egg fry in that shell? It had to have a place that took the heat and converted it into something that was usable. Elijah found a rock that had touched the fire. Let me give you two little, two little lessons here. In your Bible, do you know what a rock is always a picture of? Rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and 11 tell us that there was a rock that followed them in the wilderness and that rock was Christ. You ready? So the rock is a picture of Jesus. You with me? Do you know what fire is a picture of in the Bible? Fire is a type of judgment. At the end of the world, when the sun and the moon and all of it are done away, do you know how God's going to take care of this earth? He's going to burn it with fire. You ready? God gave me this yesterday, and I turned a holy flip in my kitchen. Elijah had to have something that would convert the fire. So that it did not cook him. He found a rock that took his heat. You know what Jesus did for you on the cross at Calvary? Jesus, the rock of ages, took your judgment. He took your heat. He took your fire. Because you couldn't handle the fire. You couldn't handle God's judgment. You couldn't handle the heat. Now here's the point. Why did God give to Elijah a picture of the judgment of God? Here is why God gave Elijah a picture of the judgment of God. How many of you have ever, ever, ever gotten into that? I felt God right there from the top of my head, the sole of my feet. How many of you have ever gotten in that wilderness and gotten in that lost place? And the first thing the devil says is, you're finally paying for what you did back there. You're finally earning what you did back there. You messed up back there and you're paying for it right here. You messed up way back there and God's finally brought it home to roost. The chickens are coming home to roost and you are paying for what you did. And he does that, doesn't he? Me and two people. The rest of y'all hypocrites, you need to get saved. You know the devil does that. You're paying for what you did there. And what God wants you to realize is in the lost place, you are not paying for your sin because your sin was already paid for. Do you know what Jesus did? He took your sin. All right, then preacher, why am I walking through this? Are you ready? You are not walking through it to pay for your sin. You are walking through it for the Spirit to sanctify your life. Do you know what the wilderness does? It rips out of you everything that's not supposed to be there. And it puts in you everything God wants you to have. You know why you are where you're at? Or at where you are? Because there's something in you that doesn't resemble Jesus. Holy Ghost rips it out of you. He doesn't rip it out on the mountain, does he? He rips it out in the valley. 